Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and we're back to the live style of games for a little while because I was, you know, just not really in the mood to film and do all the edits and stuff for the for the, uh, for the the post-duel commentary. It's just because I didn't have a lot of time on my hands and I wanted to get some things filmed because I've got some, uh, some previous obligations I've got to uh, deal with, as well as I personally like the longer videos and I like the live commentary a little bit more because it allows me to a little, like, ramble on a little bit more about, like, insightful plays and, like, different plays that can be made and things like that. The, uh, the post-duel commentaries are very very streamlined and a little bit too linearly clear-cut in terms of what I talk about in them. But uh, I'll probably be doing some more of them in the future as well as like mi like mixing and matching what I do. But anyway, today we're going to be playing a variation of the deck that got the first and second place spot at the uh, Singapore uh, Championship. The Singapore National like, Championships or whatever it is that they call it over in the uh, OCG territories. Now, uh, this is an Eidolon Wind Witch deck, and I couldn't play the exact build as they had it that got first and second place, obviously, because they have cards that are banned for us, and they have different things that we have that they have banned, like Norden and things like that, so there's, there's a little bit of a shift in the format. Uh, but, so I adjusted it to a TCG-styled list, and I wanted to play it for some videos. I wanted to see if it's, uh, if it's decent enough to, uh, to be something interesting and worth looking into, so... Without further ado, let's not talk too much more about this deck because, I mean, it's very simple. It looks very simple and clear-cut. It's Eidolons, it's Wind Witches, and it's Artifacts. You, you should understand how these engines work individually as well as how they're going to interact together at this point. But anyway, let's just jump straight into the first game, shall we? And let's see how this deck functions in a, uh, in a competitive environment, we should say. Alright, so first game. Now let's see exactly how this deck is going to uh, function. Hopefully, hopefully it functions well. Um, I've heard very good things about this deck, and I've experienced very good things about this deck uh, in the little bit of time that I've uh, playtested with it. Jesus, why is my frame rate absolutely chugging? It is chugging balls. Um, like, my FPS on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro just dropped down to 22, and that's not neat. Oh well. He summoned, uh, he summoned a Raiden, and he milled a wolf, which was pretty cool, which means now he gets a free Minerva. What is going on with my... With my uh, with my system here, I don't get it. It's lagging a bit. Um, it's probably because I've got it full screened, but like the full screen is so much better for resolution for videos. Uh, so that's that's the reason why it's there. But uh, oh my god, no! Uh, this is so bad. This is not what I'm enjoying about life and its liberties. Hold on. Let me see if I can go and uh, I might have to go and do some. Uh, some resource adjustment in my uh, in my thing, but he's making Omega Minerva. God, 18 FPS. Let's go, duelists. All right. Let's see. Set priority to high. Change priority. There we go. At least it seems better. Seems better than it was once before. All right. So what I get to do here is I he has lights engraved, meaning that I just get free reign to uh, use this. I can. Uh, I can get rid of his fairy tale snow, uh, which is neat. So we'll definitely be doing that. And uh, I've just got to deal with this Omega. Now, if he tries to Omega this uh, reckless summoning magic out of my hand, then I'll be able to just play terraforming and get another one. But if he hits the Elaster out of my hand, that's going to be a little bit of an issue. Uh, but this thing actually does double duty because what this is going to do for me here is that. Once I activate this fusion spell after I normal summon a laster, is that it's going to uh, it's going to allow him not to chain his fairy tale snow immediately, and so what that means for me is good good shit good things. But we're gonna wonder wand here because this is just a free interaction. This is just a free plus. Uh, this is just so simple because you're gonna be banishing this from field anyway, but you can also banish it from graveyard because this card operates like miracle fusion. So might as well, right? Okay, so he's gonna twin twister this here. Okay, this is this is fair. I <laughs> I kind of agree with this <clears throat> to the extent of you've got to do it. Uh, but so here, okay, he's gonna omega omega terraforming out of my hand. Okay, that's fine. Uh, but so now from here, I can kill this and uh, negate its effect with um, with my uh, with my dude. So yeah, we'll do that. So we'll activate this. And so, what will let me? It will let me banish a laser from board, and then uh, and then banish his fairy tale snow. 
Uh, so I'm going to banish, yeah, his snow is the only thing that's remotely threatening here. And so we'll summon this. And then uh, we'll use this, shuffling it back into the deck to add back a Laster. Um, I've already got a second copy of it. I've got the second copy in my hand so I can discard the Elaster to negate his uh, Minerva here. And then I get to use Sanctum to stun him out of his turn. Uh, or I could just Moral Tech him in the battle phase and uh, and get rid of his Omega. So there's that. There's, uh, there's a few different options here. Well, actually, I do need to keep this in my hand. I'm going to discard the Scythe because it has no purpose being in my hand. Um, I do have to uh, have to save this. If at all possible, because then that means he can't attack over my uh, my uh, my dude with Omega. That's the that's the key thing. Uh, so we'll set this Sanctum and we'll pass turn. And so from here, like I'm just in a really good position. <laughs> he gets the Omega, I get the terraforming, which means I get another Elaster next turn, even if I you know discard this or whatever. So it doesn't even matter. Um, Charge of the Light Brigade. Do I want to negate that? Possibly. Um, <laughs> it's very possible that I might actually want to negate that card. Because um, if I negate it, let's see, well, what did he, what did he mill? Let me, let me check that first. He milled three spells. Um, yes, I will negate this. Because this ties up any loose ends monster-wise. So we'll put this in grave, and that way, uh, that way it's just another card that can be, uh, that can be shuffled back into my deck once I banish more copies of, like, Elaster or something like that. Uh, there's there's definitely things that can happen here. Okay, so now we're in the start step of battle phase, which means that I can freely sanctum him here uh, for moral tech, because that would just be great. The moral tech on the Omega is just going to be insane, um, because now he can't get rid of it because it's not main phase. So that's great. That's so good for me. <laughs> that's absolutely fantastic. Okay, sound effects are on. Um, that is definitely something that I'm glad about. Okay, so 10 goldfish for another card, but he's going to have to make a rank 4 that outs this. Ah, Trick Clown. Okay. Uh, hmm. I should have probably just actually saved the Sanctum now that I think about it, since I do have access to a Laster off of the Terraforming. I could have discarded a Laster for uh, Merkaba and uh, boosted it by 1,000 when the Omega attacked. Yeah, I don't think that was necessary at all, summoning the Moral Tech, but the body being on the, on the board is absolutely uh, really really important. No, this is just an emerald. Okay. He has to he has to dig for more combo pieces, more cards. I mean, which is completely fair. The only thing I'm really afraid of here is if he like top deck soul charge. Uh, but I don't think he's going to he's not going to shuffle back the omega. At least there's no value in it. He'll shuffle back the Norden and two wolves. Okay, I agree with that. I agree with that handily. Um, I'm actually like getting really really unnecessarily sick again. I can feel the sickness just creeping up in the back of my throat. Because <laughs> I've just been absolutely out of it for the past day or so. I've just been sick. Uh, that's one of the things that the post-duel commentaries have been good for, is that I've been able to literally just sit back and and wait until I have, like, a free, like, six minutes that I can talk <laughs> without having any problems, uh, sinus and, uh, and nasal congestion-wise. But otherwise, with this video, with this video style, I get a lot more insight, I can be a lot more insightful, things go a bit slower so they're easier to follow. It's three games instead of five, it takes longer, but I mean, it's just, it makes more sense from a logistics point of view. I do like doing the post-dual commentary videos. Jesus, I drew that too. Why? Why I draw you too? I only play two of you, so now summoning the Elaster here is a moot point. Um, well actually no, it's not a moot point. Uh, because I'll be able to shuffle back multiples? Yeah? Yeah? Maybe? Huh? Yeah, maybe? But um... Regardless, we'll do this. What what attributes does he have in Grave that I get to work with? Um, he has just Light and Earth. So, yeah, we'll use this. We'll, uh, we will add the Elaster. That way we just have multiples in hand. Uh, that's one thing I don't like about this card is that it kind of floats to your hand. Um, and it's kind of problematic that how it does it. Uh, but, let's see. So I can make, I can make another Merkaba. Um, and negate more monster effects. Or I could make this. Um, that's probably not going to be the most ideal thing. Um, that's more of like a game ender, so yeah. So what we'll do is we will normal summon this just so that it gets banished. Uh, because I can't search it. I only play two of this, uh, two of the fusion spell. Uh, but I get to banish it here. And that's pretty cool. Well, actually, I could have discarded it for this to boost it. I'm a dumbass. 
Um, <laughs> as long as we're being real, I'm a dumbass. So we'll do this. Um, I'll banish this from board, and I will banish uh, I will banish his Raiden from his graveyard to summon this. And now I've got the summoning magic here that I can shuffle back. And uh, this Alaster is now able to search it. Yeah, I could have I could have just discarded this and boosted this by a thousand, and then Miracle Fuse from Grave. I actually just didn't think about that as an option. But carrying on, I will attack this, and I will definitely probably negate it. Uh, even though I would probably like to keep the things in my hand, I think one negate is going to be sufficient. Just because of, strictly speaking, how it functions. Well, actually, there's there's no rush for me to kill him. There's no rush for me to pressure him. Um, I'm afraid of, like, an instant fusion, but yeah, I'm just going to keep both of these in my hand. I'm just going to keep them both. There's there's no reason not to, because um, I'm not going to kill him over the emerald. It's, uh... It's definitely not going to happen. That's not going to happen this turn, but having both of these in my hand just makes it really, uh, really strong, uh, the situation that I'm in. Because I get to negate two monster effects, so I can negate, you know, whatever. Like, if he has a if he has a monster, that he's going to draw to a second card. So if he has a monster effect that he can activate, and then, like, instant fusion um, for, like, Norden, I get to negate both of those. And that's going to be very key. That's going to be very important. But, so two of these but they can only negate monster effects. But I've just been banishing his monsters from Grave, most notably his Fairy Tale Snow. Uh, okay, so he has no way to win this one. So we will just go straight into the uh, the second game here and see what uh, what else happens. Because he's gonna go first. This is not the Terror Top. This is the one that uh, this is the one that requires the Terror Top to be really good. Uh, so that's a problem. But he's opening with Brilliant Fusion, and that's really good too. Whoa. Uh, but I've got the summoning magic, I've got terraforming, I've got traps, those kind of suck going second, uh, to be completely honest. Ah, Sending Wolf is a neat little interaction. I completely forgot that that one existed, actually. <laughs> Just to be completely frank, I forgot that that existed. Oh my god, my sinuses! This is not good. This is not the professionalism that I looked for. Did he discard a wolf? Yeah, he did. No? Yes? What? Okay. It's, that's such a weird order. Uh, for it to be in grave, because one of these was the activated one, and so this was the, uh, was the thing? Yeah? What? Yeah, oh, the wolf. There we go. This is, I'm, I'm looking at this like it was a card that was sent off solar recharge, and that's definitely not. That's definitely not. Okay. I should probably stop being a dumbass. But, uh, foolish for another wolf? Or maybe trick clown to make Minerva? Oh, Zephyros. Oh. Okay. I see, so he's still got two normal summons, he's bouncing for Zephyros, he just bounced a wolf to his hand, um, which means he gets to solar recharge the wolf away, hey, okay, and what did he just mill there, he milled a Raiden, okay, so he still has to normal summon at least once to make a Minerva, and then if he has access to a tuner, oh, instant fusion too, so he's doing all this without even normal summoning yet, which kind of strange. I guess maybe none of his normal summons are like starter cards, because definitely I believe like if he had like a Raiden or something in his hand, he should definitely have normal summon that first and milled so he could like potentially hit different cards off of the Norden, bringing those back. Um, at least that's my own personal opinion. Because he's going to bring back this tuner here, and he can synchro these up into an 8, and then if he has any level 4 in his hand that he can normal summon, he can make Minerva. So there's that as an option. Okay, so these two into Minerva, summon a level 4, and synchro seems to be this. He could also make Vermilion Dragon Mech with uh, with these two, because that's a 9. Did he mill Fairy Tail Snow? He did. And he milled a Lila, which got him a draw, which is definitely not too bad for me. Is this mandatory? To uh, No, it's you can target a face-up monster, and it has to be a monster I control, so he can't book and moon his own monsters. That's something I definitely should probably keep in mind uh, going forward, but it's not mandatory, but it can't miss timing. It's an if optional effect, so it doesn't miss timing. Um, so he banished his brilliant fusion and got his Seraph Knight on the off the board, and he's gonna summon the Fairy Tale Snow and Synchro with it. I guess that's okay. I guess that's a good enough play. I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily like agree with using your defensive line like that. But I mean, he does still have ten cards in grave, so I guess it's fine. Um, if he had less than, if he had like less than seven, I wouldn't agree with it per se, but. It seems fine as is. So set card, Omega Minerva, pass turn to me. That's an artifact scythe. That card might as well not even be a card. <laughs> so Omega gets to put back, what is he going to put back? He's going to put back just a solar recharge just to be a dead card for uh, the 
for the uh, fairy tale snow. And that's the thing now. There's two fairy tale snows in grave, which means that now I have to like get rid of both of them, <laughs> which is definitely like possible. I can uh, go away. Go away, sea cleaner. I don't want you in my life right now. I don't want to click here to download. I want you to go away. Thank you. <laughs> Whoa, you're back again. Honey, go away. Oh, now you're not responding. Neat. And now you just happen to be covering the card I want to play. Oh, man. The life and times of me. The duelist. Go the fuck away! End process. This is so ridiculous. <laughs> that's so retarded that it's just doing that now. <laughs> that's not That's not what I want at all from my life, from my liberty, or my pursuit of happiness. Okay, Twin Twister's on this. That's a bit of a problem. Uh... And by a bit of a problem, I mean a very large one, because now, 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 I just don't get to play. <laughs> because my main card is not in my hand. Um, well, my main card is in my hand, but my main card is not in my hand. Um, so, I can normal summon this and get a search, and then I can set my traps and pass. And this will get a search for the... Uh, for the ice bell, which is the terror top, and so with that, okay, Omega is gonna banish here. I hope that he hits the scythe. Max C, this doesn't special summon a monster. Yay, he hit the scythe. <laughs> hey, all right, I'm completely fine with that. Set, 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 pass. <laughs> Let me set the fucking cards. Thank you. Set, 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 pass. Um, now I should hold down this A button so that I can go ahead and go Dimension Barrier on Exceases so that he cannot uh, do uh, his Minerva mill because he, he won't be able to activate the effect. So if I call Exceeds, he won't be able to mill, which means he will not be able to get more cards. He's also not going to really be able to do anything with this Trick Clown. Um, and then the Omega, if he uses its effect, I'm going to strike it. Uh, so that'll deal with that. And then uh, I'm hoping that he kills this so that I can special this out of hand and then search or summon this, search my tuner. Basically go into Crystal Wing and then that would be pretty good. Um, okay, does he have access to a third Raiden is the question. Yes, he does. All right, there's so many cards in this graveyard. Um, he milled a wolf off that too, and that's the last wolf in his deck. What a master! Oh my god. <laughs> what a master! Uh, so he can't exceed here, but he can definitely normal summon Raiden. And synchro with the trick clown and then bring it back. So there's that. There's definitely that as an option. Do I just die this turn? I don't think I die this turn, but he, well, let's see, two omegas, the 21 and the 2000. So 500 over this and then 28, 28, 21. That's 49. I think I die. I'm just going to let him do it because if I die, then I die. But if I don't, then, I mean, we live to fight another day. Crimson Blader. Um. This has to get striked. This will get striked, and that way I get to play all my next turn. Because the Crimson Blader is definitely not something I want to deal with, and that, that actually might make me survive. Uh, because, let's see, this is 500 over this, and then the 21 and the, tw uh, the 28 is 49. So that's 49 plus 500, which is 54, which means that I'm living. Living by the skin of my ass, but I am living. And that is definitely something that uh, that I need to do to be able to play the game. But uh, the problem is, is that now if he Omega's the right card out of my hand, well, this is going to special, and it's going to special the level four out of my deck, and the level four out of my deck is going to add the level one, and then the level one I want it to not get hit by uh, by his Omega. So hopefully he just hits like the Scythe again. That's going to be the key thing. Is if he hits the Scythe again, then it'll be great. But otherwise, it's going to suck. <laughs> Oh wait, he gets to summon this. Um, yeah, this special summons itself in either attack or defense position. So yeah, I just lose this turn. I forgot that this card did that. I forgot that this card could summon itself in either position. Well, rather, I didn't know because I don't read the card that much because I just wait for it to get played. Um, that's that's the that's the difference here. So yeah, this is this is game. Uh, this is game 100%. So now I get to go first, and so this should be interesting. Um, look at all these Wind Witch cards. And none of them are none of them are the terror top. That's unfortunate. That's so sad. <laughs> I can add the terror top, but like, what the hell? This is ridiculous. Look at this hand. Look at his hand. Come on now. Look at his hand. 
I can special this and I can special another one of these from my deck and then special this, but then that's just a level 7 synchro. Man, this sucks. <laughs> this is a bad situation. This is not at all what I'm looking forward to when I sit down to play this cool innovative deck that like raped Singapore. Now even though I did change things around to make it TCG legal and to make it, you know, TCG oriented, it's still more or less the same deck. It's the same functioning concept. Um, and that's the thing, but I mean, I'll probably just win because of double strike, if we're being completely honest, because next turn I get to normal this, or I can normal this. Um, I can normal this and do that. This Norden will get negated too, because um, he's already used his uh, normal summon, and now if he has soul charge, then I guess I lose. <laughs> I guess I lose here and then, like here and now if I, okay, nothing? Yes. Alright, dimensional barrier, that's going to be pretty useful. Uh, let's see, I think that the main thing I want to do here is that I'm going to want to, yeah, I'm just going to have to normal summon this. I don't want to, um, but, uh, let's see, if you, uh, if you, let's see, it, when the, if this card is normal, special summon deal 500, yeah, might as well, might as well deal the 500. I was like, I know this thing doesn't get a summon effect from deck when it's, uh, when it's normal summoned. I was like, what the, what, what effect is it trying to proc here? Um, but turns out it's just burn him for 500. Maxi? Okay. Like, you're not reading the right effect. Like, come on now. I mean, you're gonna get rewarded for it anyway because I'm gonna special this. And this thing activates, so it doesn't matter. You could have chained Maxi to it anyway. Uh, but like, still. That's ridiculous. That's stupid. That's stupid that you're doing these things. <laughs> like, Maxi to an effect that burns me for 500. Got me. Um, I'm gonna make this crystal wing, and I'm gonna burn him for more. I'm gonna burn him for more damage, for more damage. Uh, the crystal wing cannot be destroyed by card effects, so that is something to uh, to note. And I've also got dimensional barrier backing it up, so I'll be able to like dimensional barrier on Xyz, and that's basically going to be uh, basically going to be everything that like needs to be done. Um, there's no Eidolon cards in this game unless I draw a laser next turn, but otherwise. Uh, I let him draw quite a few cards, and the Crystal Wing cannot be destroyed by card effects. And I'm kind of hoping that he does play Aragaki, so that he can just like slam it down, and then wonder why the Crystal Wing's not going anywhere. Uh, Twin Twister on this. Okay, well, activate. Calling Xyz, because that's the most relevant thing here. That's the most relevant part of your deck. If you can't make Minerva, I don't know how you win. So we'll just do that. And so the Trick Clown comes back. Uh, so that's kind of neat enough. I don't know if there's any level 8, like, if there's any level 8 synchro in his deck that outs my Crystal Wing, because he can't make a Crystal Wing of his own with the situation of, like, Raiden plus this. Like, that's the thing that I'm, that's the thing that I'm most curious about. Um, that's his normal summon. Do I want to negate that? Yeah, I do. I'm gonna negate the shit out of that. That way, next turn, I can normal summon this, kill the Trick Clown, negate its effect, then boom. And then, then we should be good to go. We should be... <laughs> This is the most weird game that I've played, and like I said, I won because of traps. Like, if I win this game, it's definitely because of the double strike and then the dimension barrier that I top decked. Like, it's definitely not because of any other factor. Oh, hey, he has Brilliant Fusion now, so I'm actually probably not going to win this game. Well, I say that, but I don't know what level 8 synchro he would make that deals with this, per se. Um, that's the thing. I don't know what one he would make that deals with it. Because not even Scarlight gets to deal with this now because of how big it is. <laughs> so, oh, I don't know what he makes. Um, he's got Fairy Tale Snow engraved now, so that's something that's going to get negated next turn off of the Crystal Wing. But yeah, Crimson Blader is going to do nothing to this. That's the thing, Battle Phase. What are you doing? This is 3,800. It's going to get bigger. Oh yeah, this, this. That's right. This thing can use its effect now! That's right! That is so fucking right! Uh, one of these days I'm gonna learn how these things operate. <laughs> one of these days I'm going to read this card, right? And I'm gonna read it and actually retain the knowledge of what it is, right? One day I'll read it and retain knowledge. And when that happens, I will be the master. Because I will know that it can summon itself at all times in any position. <laughs> uh, okay, so this gets over this. That's easy now. Okay, that's that's perfectly fine. I'm accepting of this. Um, but it gains attack, but that's 
I mean, that's nothing, nothing gonna happen there, man. And now, the entire purpose of my deck is moot. Because this is a very much a deck that loses to Crimson Blader. Uh, very, very much so. Definitely not something that I'm gonna be able to deal with. Especially with just this one card in hand. Like, come on now. And the Moral Tech? Yeah. Oh, this is, uh, this is not happening. We are not winning this game in any way, shape, or form. So, oh man, that, that last hand was weird, and I don't know how to feel about it, but, I mean, that's the way Yu-Gi-Oh! goes sometimes, I guess. But still, like, this deck had a finals in Singapore, and I would expect it to operate a little bit more fluidly than this. Now, the first game was really good. The first game I can't argue with, but... Going first and opening none of the proper Win Witch cards kind of seems like it sucks. So uh, that that seems like a big hindrance to anything I was trying to do. But anyway, as always guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. And if you like this video, definitely be sure to like and subscribe and do all that sort of nonsense. It helps out a ton. It helps the channel and community within this channel grow. And that's an amazing thing if you want to support the channel. But check out the links on screen and maybe go check out my channel itself to find more videos you might like if you haven't seen a lot of them. But, as I already said, thanks for watching, thanks for your time, and as usual, guys, take care. Let me know if you guys want to see more of this uh, deck in action, and I will try to make that happen.